Hello and welcome to the All Rookie Podcast. Today is April 20th, 2022, and I'm your host, William Harris, aka William is Bill. Great to be back with you today on another great episode of the All Rookie Podcast. In this episode, we're going to go over my first and second all-team rookies. Um, so this is going to be the top 10 rookies in the draft class this year with their seasons, all-encompassing stats, minutes, turnovers, you know, based on competition, everything. So we're going to get into that, you know, before the season, I predicted my first and second team and let's see how many I got right and how many I got wrong. <laughs> so no, starting off with it, let's recap last year's first team all rookie. That was LaMelo Ball made it, Sadiq Bay, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, J.C. on Tate, I always call him J.C. on Tate, but it's Jason Tate. <laughs> Second team was Desmond Bain, Isaac Okoro, Emmanuel Quickly, Isaiah Stewart, and Patrick Williams. So that's just an example of the talent that made it last year. You know, if that was done again this year, most of those same guys would be on this list. Now, and also before we get started, let me get into the NBA G League all-rookie team that was announced for this year. And that was, they only announced five guys. There's no second team with this. Uh, Charles Bassey at center. Luca Garza, center. Michael Potter, center. <laughs> Carly Jones and Mac McClung, two guards. It's surprising that Trevor and Queen did not make it because he was regular season MVP and finals uh, MVP. And he's a rookie. But who knows? Um, but, yeah, those are... Just recapping last year's NBA first and second all-team rookie and the NBA G League all-team rookie for this year. And, you know, Charles Bassey is a guy. He's probably the most talented guy on that list. I felt he went late in the second round. I felt he could have been a first-round pick. I had him mocked in the first round to the Nets. Yeah, but they went with De'Ron Sharp. And I think he has a shot at getting some real minutes next year because he was dominant in the G League. Now, let's get straight to it like it's nothing to it. We'll start out with the first team. You know, let's get straight to it. My For my first team all rookie, you know, three of the guys are guaranteed because three guys are in the finals for rookie of the year. And so I'll just start with Cade, Cade Cunningham. This is in no particular order. <laughs> Cade Cunningham, you know, he finished with 17.4 points per game, five and a half rebounds, five and a half assists. 1.2 steals per game, 0.7 blocks per game, 3.7 turnovers per game. That's this negative right there. <laughs> but, you know, that was in 32 minutes per game, and he played 64 games. And so, you know, obviously he uh, is a finalist for MVP. I mean, <laughs> rookie of the year. Uh, and he truly had a great rookie season. In the beginning, it started off a little rocky. But, you know, most rookies are either going to start rocky or go through some tough times in the middle of their season. And they normally turn out, coming out, better off on the end. <clears throat> Cade started off rough, finished on a complete tear. Uh, throughout the season, he had 10 double-doubles, and he had two triple-doubles. Very impressive. And his career high for his rookie season was 34 points. I mean, you really can't say too much. He was the, pretty much the best player on the Pistons. He was second-highest leading scorer second leading scorer uh, to Jeremy Grant, who didn't play that many games. So he really was the best player on the team as a rookie. Great first season for Cade. Evan Mobley, obviously my other pick. I was going to say my second pick, but they're not in order. But Evan Mobley from the Cavs, he averaged 15 points per game, 8.3 rebounds, two and a half assists, 0.8 steals, and 1.7 blocks per game with two turnovers per game. That was in 34 minutes per game. He played 69 games. Uh, he had 21 double-doubles in his rookie season. That's incredible. His career high for his rookie season, 30 points. Uh, Evan Mobley obviously was one of the better defenders in this draft class. Also, he had an incredible defensive rookie season. Some people are saying he could make the all-defensive team, and that's just ridiculous for a rookie. And normally when you're all-defensive caliber – especially this young, you're not that good in offense. And Evan Mobley was 
really good in offense as well. Like I said, 21 double-doubles in his rookie season. He's well on the path to greatness. Next, we have Scotty Barnes, average 15.3 points per game, seven and a half rebounds, three and a half assists, 1.1 steals, 0.7 blocks, and 1.8 turnovers per game. That was in 35 minutes per game, and he played 74 games. So when it comes to rookie of the year, he did play more games than Cade and uh, Evan Mobley, but if that matters to you, <laughs> it probably doesn't. <laughs> but uh, Scotty Barnes had 13 double-doubles, so that's very impressive as well. His career high was 31 points. Scotty Barnes definitely impressed and shocked a lot of people in his rookie season. In my opinion, I saw this in Scotty, but I didn't see it in his rookie season. So, and you know, I was one of the people more high on Scotty. So most people like you'll hear if you go back and look at some tape, you'll hear some experts saying he's a role player. Um, he's too raw. He should not be going this high, et cetera, et cetera. I thought he should have went fifth. He ended up going fourth. So I, I wasn't mad at that. Great pick by the Raptors. And he showed and proved why, you know, he was he appeared to be held back in college and he was truly unleashed with the Raptors. Great rookie season. Now it starts getting dicey with the fourth and fifth selection. But I'm going to go with Franz Wagner. He averaged 15 points per game, four and a half rebounds, three assists, one steal per game, and 0.4 blocks per game with one and a half turnovers per game. He played 31 minutes per game, ended up playing 79 games. That's only 82 in the season. He only missed three games. That's incredible right there. Uh, Very durable, reliant. Uh, you know, steady, consistent player. And he had a career high with a 38-point game. That's ridiculous. Uh, that's insane. Uh, he had – but he had the second highest uh, of the five guys that I'm going to name uh, point performance. But Franz Wagner was always there for the magic. <laughs> you know, you can you can book it every game. He was about 15 and 7, 15 and 5, you know, 17 and 4. 21 and 10. Like it was just really good production every game from a rookie. And you don't see that every day, especially from the eighth pick. And in my opinion, Franz Wagner was a risky pick. I thought he was not good enough to go that high in the draft. Um, So he proved me wrong. He was not a guy I was high on at all. I would have been fine if he went in the twenties and he ended up being on my all rookie first team. So that's a credit to Franz. It's also kind of shows how bad the Magic were. <laughs> so if the Magic were a better team, how would Franz have done? I'm not sure. We will see in the future years. But as for now, he makes my all rookie team great, consistent, steady rookie season and with some great games mixed in there as well. Now for my fifth spot. This is very controversial. I'll tell you right now, it comes down between three people. Uh, Josh Giddy, Jalen Green, and Herb Jones. Now, I think I'm the only one that I've seen that has this player in my first team, all rookie. But I'm going to do it. I have to go with Jalen Green. He averaged 17.3 points per game. That's second highest points per game. And that's only to Cade, who's 0.1 points per game more than him. Cade was 17.4. Jalen Green, 17.3. Uh, he averaged 3.4 rebounds per game, 2.6 assists per game. That's really his only negatives right there is he needs to get those rebounds and or assists up, and it wouldn't even be a question. But he struggled early on in his rookie season, uh, fitting in, uh, knowing when to take control, knowing when to pull back. But he picked it up near the midway after the All-Star game break. And he really turned it on. But throughout the whole season, he was putting up some decent games as far as points. It was just the other categories that he was lacking a little bit in. But he also averaged 0.7 steals per game and 0.3 blocks per game. So those blocks are non-existent, really. Um, but two turnovers per game. That I would have expected that to be a lot worse. You know, like Cade pretty much averaged four and Jalen pretty much averaged two. I think most people would have expected that to be Closer, you know, I think they expected Jalen Green to be a little more reckless, even though Cade has the ball in his hands a lot more than Jalen. As far as being a distributor, um, Jalen took care of the ball pretty well. And at the beginning of the season, 
it looked like that was going to be a struggle for Jalen Green, but he ended up with just two per game. That's the same as Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes. So it really was not that big of a deal to him and big of an issue. Uh, he played 32 minutes per game, played 67 games, and he had a career high of a 41-point game. So he's the highest scoring rookie in this whole class as far as a career high, highest point total. He went off, and that was in the last game of the season. But if you say, oh, that shouldn't count. <clears throat> Before that, he had five 30-plus point games in a row. That's just ridiculous and incredible production from a rookie. I mean, this is not something you see every day. It's pretty – and, I mean, he's on a bad team. It was pretty much him and Kevin Porter Jr. at the end. You could you could have stopped Jalen Green if you wanted to, if you could, but they couldn't. So uh, Jalen Green, great rookie season. That's just too many points and incredible games and games played for me to keep him off of the first team all-rookie. Now, uh, if you disagree, I'm sure there's a lot of Thunder fans, Pelicans fans, comment, <laughs> hit me with the comments, you know, don't kill me too hard, but, you know, <clears throat> let me know your opinion. Was I wrong? I'll get into my second team now, and I'll explain why some of your guys are in the second team list as opposed to the first team list. And, you know, if you didn't know already, let me reiterate, like, subscribe, review, the All Ricky podcast on Instagram, you know, on YouTube, on Twitter, hit me up at William is Bill. Now let's get into the second team All Ricky. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and get him out of the way, Josh Giddy. And trust me, I wanted to have him on my first team All Ricky because he was killing it all season. A lot of people, if you've been with me this whole ride for the All Ricky podcast, I appreciate it, first of all. But you will know, before draft season, I hated Josh Giddy. I thought he was a terrible pick. I thought he should never have gone that high in the draft. I thought his game would not translate at all. He couldn't shoot. So what's the point guard that's skinny, young, can't shoot, going to do in the NBA? Uh, he's not super athletic. But, I mean, boy, did he prove me wrong. He had an incredible rookie season, averaging 12.5 points per game. Almost eight rebounds per game, 6.4 assists per game, one steal per game, 0.4 blocks per game, 3.2 turnovers per game. Not great, but not terrible. <laughs> uh, and he averaged uh, 31.5 minutes per game. But he here's the kicker. He only played 54 games. He missed a ton of games to injury. So, I mean, that's close to half the games missed, really. That's like 30, 28 games missed. That's a lot of games missed. And that helped him to fall out of that first team for me. So there's reason for it. Okay, guys. But he did have four triple doubles in his rookie season. That is insane. And I, he was having a couple of them back to back. I was like, wow. But the Thunder were tanking, losing on purpose as well. Uh, not playing Shea Gilders Alexander a lot. So Josh Giddy was the main guy out there a lot of times as well. Uh, but he man, he also had 16 double doubles with those points and assists, sometimes points and rebounds. He really was <clears throat> incredible and in everything that the Thunder could have hoped for for his rookie season. And he was rookie of the month a couple of times in a row as well. Well on his way to first team all rookie. But it's just those injuries, those nagging injuries. Everyone in the top five pretty much was relatively healthy. You know, Kay played. The uh, fewest games was 64. That's still 10 more games than Josh Giddy. And his career high was 28 points in his rookie season. So if there was a all-team first rookie 5B, you know, I have five guys. If it was a 5A and 5B, he'd be there. But there's not. So he's my first player on my second team. We want to rank that. And if you want to go to my second guy on my first team, who also – was in very high consideration to be on that first team, but he makes it to the second team. I got to give it to Herb Jones. Average nine and, for the Pelicans, average nine and a half points per game, four rebounds, two assists, 1.7 steals, which was great. Uh, 0.8 blocks, which is pretty great for a guard. And 1.3 tur turnovers per game. That was in 30 minutes per game. And he played 78 games. 
that's great. Um, consistency, um, durability, and his defense was top notch. There's talk that he could be an off defense, blah, all defensive team player as well. Um, but I just couldn't have him on that first team with those points, not even in double digits. And then the rebounds and assists, those numbers are not big enough to propel him over anyone else, in my opinion. It was close, though, because his defense was that special. And he showed how great he was because he jumped over the Pelicans' first-round pick, Trey Murphy. Yes, Herb Jones was a second-round pick for the Pelicans. Trey Murphy was a first-round pick. They were picked like 30 spots indifferent between each other. And Herb jumped over Trey Murphy, stole his job. There was a spot to be had for Trey Murphy to start or be the first man off the bench and be productive for the Pelicans. And then for the majority of the season, Trey Murphy sat the bench and Herb Jones started games like with a good lineup, (laughs) whether when they were bad and when they were good, Herb Jones started. So uh, that's just a testament to how great a rookie season Herb Jones had. And, you know, his shot improved, defense improved even though he was all defensive player defensive player of the year in college his defense still had to improve to compete with guys in the nba as a starter not just off the bench against bench guys as a starter so truly impressive rookie season for herb jones proud to have him on my second team all rookie um my third guy on my second team all rookie davion mitchell i have also seen that not a lot of players not a lot of guys have Davion Mitchell on their second team all rookie. To them, I say, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, they have guys. I'm not going to get into it. But Davion Mitchell deserves to be on this <laughs> team, in my opinion. Averaging 11.5 points per game, 2.2 rebounds per game, 4 assists per game, 0.7 steals per game, 0.3 blocks per game, 1.5 turnovers per game. And that was in 28 minutes per game. He played 75 games. His career high for the season was 28 points. That was tremendous. Uh, And he really, really showed out at the end of the season when, you know, Tyrese Halliburton got traded. That helped him get more minutes. And then also when De'Aaron Fox got injured, I mean, he really was unleashed. And uh, he went on a tear there at the end. In my opinion, he proved that if he would have got minutes, bigger minutes, a bigger role throughout the whole season, I mean, he would have been able to be really dominant and have an even greater rookie season. And not to mention those stats, they may not jump out at you as the best thing you've ever seen, but you have to keep in mind, like I said, he did not start for majority of the season and his defense was top notch as well. Uh, I remember early in the season, he was locking down Donovan Mitchell and, and Donovan Mitchell was one of his biggest fans when Davion was in college raving about his game. And then when he got drafted, Donovan even said he was how proud of him that he was that he got drafted that high. And then when they played the jazz, Davion was just really making Donovan work and <laughs> giving him a head- headache. You know, Davion Mitchell got the nickname off night. I don't really get it. I don't know why, but he got a nickname off off night. And that was due to him locking guys up. And that was, he got that name early because his defense was really on point. And he's just a ball of energy that's ready to guard you all night. He cares more about guarding you than scoring. But yet, like I said, his career high, he had a 28-point game. So Davion Mitchell is definitely an uh, all-rookie player, in my opinion. Next, I mean, it really gets to me, it gets tricky after this point because there's a big drop off. Um, but there's a couple of guys that will be mentioned. I have some honorable mention guys, but I'm gonna have to go with Chris Duarte as my fourth guy on my second team all rookie. And it, he he made a case for first team if he would have kept up the production, if the Pacers would have kept the team that they had, but they made a lot of moves, a lot of trades. They had a lot of injuries, a lot of tanking. So Chris Duarte ended up scoring 13 points per game, four rebounds, two assists, one steal, 0.2 blocks, and 1.6 turnovers per game. He played 28 minutes per game, and his only knock was he played those 55 games. If those games were up a little higher, that would have been great. 
but he still did too much to not make the second team all rookie to me. His career high was 27 points in a game. And I believe that was the first game of the season. He came out lighting it up. And a lot of teams were like, man, what did we miss? We miss out on this, you know, because during draft season, your age is one of your biggest detractors. He was 24. So he fell to where he did in the draft because of his age. You know, he was better than Zaire Williams in college. You know, he probably was better than a lot of guys drafted ahead of him, like Josh Primo. Uh, but his age made him fall in the draft. And that's just how it goes sometimes. But that first game, people were like, oh, no, we made a mistake. But uh, he played well throughout the rest of the season. It was just Karis LeVert was out. When Karis LeVert came back, that kind of took away some shots from him. Then lineup changes left and right. But he still ended up being one of the top uh, seven scoring rookies in this class. I think he was six. Yeah, he was the sixth highest scoring rookie in his class, and he played well. Can't wait to see his outlook next year. And my last and final guy, I have to give it to. This was tough, I'm telling you, but I had to give it to Alperin Sengun. Now, you can say he probably didn't deserve it, but it really was to no fault of his own. But I feel this spot could have been filled by Bones Highland, uh, you know, Really just Bones Highland. <laughs> so it was 10A, 10B. It would be Bones. Uh, but I gave it to Alperin Sengun because he did a little bit more in all the other categories. And his minutes were very, really low. And so he averaged nine and a half points per game, five and a half rebounds, two and a half assists, 0.8 steals, which is great for a big man, and one block per game with two turnovers per game. That was in 20.7 minutes per game, and he played 72 games. His career high was 27 points. That was a big game. He mainly had great games when Christian Wood was not there, and he struggled to get minutes early in the season when they had Daniel Tice there for whatever reason. I don't know. But uh, Alperin Zangon, those numbers, think about those numbers in 20 minutes, 9-5 and one block and one steal. If he played 30 minutes per game, I mean, that's going to be 15 points, you know, seven or so rebounds over one assist, over one steal, over one block. Uh, So I just had to translate those numbers because we all know he got screwed. We all know he should have been playing more minutes and he didn't. And he had the fantasy world on tilt all year for the everyone was waiting for the Rockets to let him go. And they never really did. Toward the end, they kind of gave him a a little extra room to play and do whatever. But he really should have got that all season. He was, in my opinion, I had him mocked to go seventh to Golden State. So I'm glad that a lot of people were able to see flashes, but that was due to Houston's plan. <laughs> so it is what it is. But Alperin Sengun is my last guy, in my second team all rookie. So let me go over that first team one more time. Kay Cunningham, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes, Jalen Green, Franz Wagner, first team all rookie. Second team all rookie, Josh Giddy, Herb Jones, Davion Mitchell, Chris Duarte, and Alperin Sengun. Now, you hate them? Hey, let me know. <laughs> Twitter at William is Bill, comment, YouTube, all that. But my honorable mention, I have six guys worth honorable mention because this rookie class was just so great. And the first guy I have to say is Bones Highland. He got screwed by his team, too. He was on a good team with the Nuggets, so he didn't get a ton of minutes. He was fighting for scraps, really. But he still averaged 10 points per game, 2.7 rebounds, 2.8 assists. So those numbers are really low. Um, 0.6 steals and 0.3 blocks and 1.2 turnovers per game. And that it wasn't only 19 minutes per game, and he played 60 games this year. So you translate his numbers, they're better as well but just not as good as Alperin Sengun's. So it's really close. Uh, But I love what Bones brought to the team. It's going to help him be a better player probably that he didn't play on a bad team and just put up big numbers. He's going to learn to be a really good player. But I don't know if we'll ever see him unleashed anywhere because he's on such a good team. Could be a while. 
My next honorable mention player, Jalen Suggs. Yes, believe it or not, a lot of people will look at Jalen Suggs and say, man, did he do anything this year? He was a disappointment. He's a bust. But really, he averaged 12 points per game, 3.6 rebounds, 4.4 assists, 1.2 steals, 0.4 blocks, and three turnovers per game. That's not great. but And that was in 27 minutes per game. But here's the kicker. He only played 48 games. So him missing all those games – it's a big reason why you thought he was a big disappointment this year. And the fact that he went uh, fifth and there was a lot of debate. He should have went fourth and Scotty Barnes, da, 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 da. Scotty Barnes was rookie of the year conversation. Jalen Suggs injured, not playing well, considering all things considered. But when you break it down and, you know, you back away from everything, he was still one of the top eight scorers. Um, as far as rookies, so very productive rookie season, and I truly think Jalen Suggs can be great in this league. I don't know if it's going to be with the Magic. They really need a roster overhaul, but I'm still big on Jalen Suggs, and you should be too. Uh, I'm going to go with Ayo Desumu as well. His numbers don't look great, but he did have some impact when there were a lot of injuries on the Bulls, but this is honorable mention, so you know that's why he didn't make it. Nine points per game, three rebounds, three assists, 0.8 steals, 0.4 blocks. That was in 27 minutes, played 77 games. Pretty much covered that. Dwayne Washington for Indiana came out of nowhere to y'all, but I covered the draft. So I had Dwayne Washington as a draftable player. I compared him to Darren Williams. He was great in college. And I saw greatness in Dwayne Washington that could translate to the NBA. I didn't know once he did not get drafted, I was like, oh, man, that sucks. I don't know if we're going to get to see Dwayne Washington. and He's really good. But he got minutes early and often with the Pacers, and he was able to show what he could do, scoring 10 points per game, almost two rebounds and two assists per game, 0.5 steals, and basically no blocks per game and one turnovers per game. But that was in only 20 minutes per game. So if you look at that production, that's similar to Bones Highland, really, but he just only played 48 games. So you translate that with more minutes. Jane Washington had a really impressive rookie season. Who knows where he will be next year because the Pacers are going to be OKC of the East, it looks like. <laughs> no, but um, I don't know. We, we don't know what direction the Pacers are going in, but I was proud of Dwayne Washington. And that let me know I could trust my instinct because him and A.O., uh, I had A.O. DeSumo as a first round pick. Not many other people did, but when I scouted him, I saw talent and he was able to come through. And so was Dwayne Washington. Next two guys, Trey Mann for the OKC Thunder, 10.4 points per game, three rebounds, one and a half assists, 0.8 steals, 0.2 blocks, 1.2 turnovers. And that was in 23 minutes per game, played 60 games. And a lot of the first part of the season, he didn't get to play much. But then once some injuries start kicking in, Trey Mann was able to show what he could do, and he played great for OKC, especially when he got big opportunities. But in my opinion, when he got drafted, I was like, what is OKC doing? Why did they draft him? It was a wasted draft pick. Not that, not anything to do with Trey Mann's talent. It was the positions. They had Josh Giddey. They had Shea Gilgers Alexander. They had uh, Maladon. They had somebody else, too. They had a rookie they had young point guard overload and they drafted Trey Mann. So I was like, man, that sucks. He won't be able to play much. But in the end, he did turn out to play a lot of minutes um, toward the end of the season. But where will he be next year? You can't play four rookies in the starting lineup. So four point guards in the starting lineup. So we'll see. Uh, I wish he was on a different team. That's all I can say. Last but not least, Jonathan Kaminga. For the Golden State Warriors, had 9.3 points per game, 3.3 rebounds, one assist, 0.4 steals, 0.3 blocks, one turnover per game. You say, why is he on here? And that's because he only plays 17 minutes a game. You could literally double those minutes. Some of our rookie of the year candidates doubled those minutes. And then Jonathan Kaminga would be averaging 18 and six. And those numbers would look a lot different. <laughs> And he would be looking like a rookie of the year candidate. So think about that. Uh, he played 70 games for the Warriors. 
And not only that, he had to get in where he fit in with the Warriors because that was already championship caliber team full of veterans. But when he got the chance to play, he showed and proved why he should be out there on the court getting opportunities. And I wish he would have got more. You know, he's a guy I'm really high on. I had Scotty Barnes, in my opinion. I project him to be Giannis Antetokounmpo like for Jonathan Jonathan Kaminga. I had him projected to be Kawhi Leonard like. So I'm just as high on him. He just needs the opportunity. And who knows what they're going to do with the roster in the future. Golden State's not getting any younger, but they are still in that championship window. So Kaminga may have to wait, or he's just going to push Wiggins right on out the door. We will see. So that will wrap it up for my first and second all-rookie team choices. It's hard to title that, (laughs) but but that was my team. If you like it, if you don't like it, let me know. Who did I leave off? Who did I get wrong? Who was... Never should have been considered. All that good stuff. Just let me know. Comment. Like, subscribe to the All Rookie Podcast. I appreciate all your time. Thank you for listening. If you like the show, tell a friend to tell a friend. And until next time, I'm out of here. Peace.